Thank you, Paul. Um, let's see. We need to do flight salute. Uh, Richard, would you need us, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh. Roll call, Sandy. Here. The district digitally records the audio portion of the meetings. The recorder is located in front of the board scribe, that's Sandy. All recordings are kept in the superintendent's office for 30 days and are available um, during that time period for inspection by members of the public on district equipment without charge. As a community service, the Pacifica Community Television records and broadcasts the meetings, and we do ask people speaking to step to the podium because that is their microphone for those folks who wish to um, see this broadcast. Um, the report out on closed session topics. The board met on two items, conference with labor negotiator and a public employee dis discipline dismissal release and complaint. The board will be going back into closed session at the end of this meeting. No action was taken. All right, we need an approval of the minutes for October 8th. I move. Was there minutes? Second. <coughs> Changes. All in favor? Passes by vote, thank you. Okay. We need approval of the agenda, uh, agenda and consent agenda. I'll move to approve the agenda and consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Passes by vote, thank you. Okay. All right. Um, communications. This portion of the agenda is available to the public to address the board on any issues that is not on the agenda. The maximum time allowed for any speaker is three minutes. I currently have two cards. I believe that uh, Julie Austin and Laura Alvarado is for open public communications. Oh, okay. I just want to make sure that I can call people at the appropriate time. Okay. All right. Um, okay. If you want to pass in cards, please, please feel free to do so. All right, LSEA? Uh, nothing right now. Okay, CSEA? Nothing at this time. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, so people wishing to address the board, what I'm going to do is um, I will just go through, I'll call the first three people so you guys can know who's coming up next so we can move this along. Um, it would be Debbie Little, Alice Garibaldi, and Michael Barberitz, Barberitz I apologize. Just to clarify, mine was on the bottom. Uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> for a reason, but that's okay. Okay, I'm sorry. I it's just... okay. I'm just teasing. So my name is Debbie Little, a uh, teacher at Sunset Ridge, also LSCA president. I'm speaking. Um, sorry. I had a first year teacher send me a letter and ask that I speak it for them. So read it for them. I'm speaking as a first year teacher in, here in Pacifica School District. I cannot express how much this district has welcomed me and the knowledge of the teachers and staff I have met shows. I'm speaking with the most gracious of intentions for the teachers, future teachers who are eight months away from applying from their first teaching positions parents, and most importantly, and most forgotten in these situations, the kids. Teaching was something that I fell in love with early in college. I cannot recall exactly what set that fire. Maybe a mixture of excellent past teachers, being raised to value my education, or the influence from my teaching sister and single parent mom. Whatever the reason, I wake up in the morning to the Pacifica fog and I'm honestly excited to see my students, my fellow co-workers, and do anything I have to anything I have to in order for my class of students to leave questioning and smiling. But as a first year teacher living in Pacifica, 
Working as a teacher in the Pacifica School District, I am faced with the reality of other life needs like rent, food, student loan payments, car payments, PG&E, the list goes on and on. In all honesty, I am not making a living wage to be able to live in this area. The Bay Area is the most expensive place to live in America and our salary scale in the Pacifica School District is one of the lowest. How do we expect to attract and retain highly qualified teachers just leaving the credential program? You're sending the message that you don't value your teachers, the ones who are passionate in teaching your children and the children of the future. Is that the message that you want to send? To attract and retain highly qualified teachers like the ones you have acquired, please reconsider the capping of our benefits and increase our salary enough to live in this area. From a passionate first year teacher who is appreciative for this unbelievable position in Pacifica School District and wants nothing more than to be able to make this place home. I was hoping to be on the bottom too. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, well, good evening everyone. My name is Alice Garibaldi. When I look around this room, there are so many people that I have connections with and have had for many, many years, and I think that's true for everyone here. Um, our lives have touched in so many important ways. Being an optimist, I suggest we go forward, building on our positive past to re-examine our current situation with fresh eyes. The traits that make our district strong are a source of pride for everyone here. Hard work, creativity, perseverance, dedication. Collectively, we all have our shoulders to the same grindstone, sorry, making our district the best it can be by offering the best educational opportunities to our students. When you care that much, it shows. It is not surprising that the teachers bring those same character forces to the current dispute and that we are resolved to reach a just conclusion. Here is what we are asking. Listen to our needs and work together with us to reach a resolution that shows us we are valued and respected. To draw a reference pertinent to, pertinent to current events, let's craft a winning resolution by game four rather than stretching it to the seventh game. <laughs> of us, all of us, would like to focus our energies on the classroom. That's where they belong. Intelligent people know every problem has a solution. Let's find one that's fair to everyone. Thank you. So while Michael makes his way up, the next person would be Jennifer Mitchell, Cynthia Skinner, and then Laura Alvarado. For Brovich or different Michael? No, Michael, you that's you. For Brovich. Here we go. Brovich. Thank you. Oh, don't worry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you guys go in alphabetical order? <laughs> I, you know, it's kind of healthy. So hi, I'm Michael Bobrovich, special ed teacher over here at Valmar. Uh, this is just a, a me issue. It has nothing to do with them. When we're done, please, do not read me a prepared statement for the lawyers, from the lawyers. Last time, I felt offended and I was mad at you for like a week and a half. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care if your message to me is thank you very much, talk to our lawyers. Tell me that. Don't read me a letter, please. Thank you. Thank you. Jennifer? I'm Jennifer Mitchell, kindergarten teacher at Ocean Shore, parent of uh, two, well, now one graduate, <laughs> and a fourth grader, vice president of the Ocean Shore PTO. And I live at 776 Alta Vista Drive. I think I'm supposed to say that. Um, I'm going to try not to cry this time. I'm going to try. Um, here I am again, encouraging you to rethink your unwillingness to bargain with the teachers regarding salary and benefits. Just to reiterate and clarify, the district is offering a small raise to the teachers but is proposing a cap on benefits. For many of us, this raise would not cover the increased cost of health care coverage. Thus, 
we are receiving a pay cut rather than a raise. Even those who, based on their choice of benefits, would see an initial raise, it would be quickly eaten up by the cost of health benefits down the line. Essentially, all teachers would eventually see a decline in salary. Some of us would see it immediately, like me. For others, it may take a few years. The fact that this is being touted as a raise is ridiculous. It's smoke and mirrors, it's a shell game, it's a farce. The attorney the district has hired, Mr. Greg Danis, is well known for traveling up and down California, encouraging districts to quickly declare impasse in their bargaining sessions. I've Googled him. <laughs> this is not collective bargaining. It's a tactic he uses to break teachers' unions. Mr. Danis makes a lot of money doing this, enough to live in Hillsboro, in fact. To be clear, Mr. Danis will return to Hillsboro with money in his pocket from Pacifica. He will not be here to make cold calls for the next parcel tax. He will not be here to run your PTO pancake breakfast. He will not be here to help replace the teachers this district will lose. He will not be here to teach your children. This town enjoys a vibrant school system and hardworking teachers despite low salaries. For many of us, the good benefits are what keep us here, that and a loyalty to the community we love. For many, many years, the teachers in the school district shared a mutual respect and a feeling of camaraderie. Sadly, these days are now gone. There is a distinct feeling among the teachers that we are unappreciated and easily replaced. There is also a distinct feeling that there is no longer fiscal transparency. Whether these things are true or not, the perception matters. This passionate and tenacious community passed a parcel tax against all odds and then did it again a few years later. It was possible because Pacifica trusted the district and the schools because they saw the employees worked hard to provide a solid education for the children of this town, because they saw their children were succeeding academically, because we saw that they were, we were committed and we were united. It would be difficult to make that same argument today. As we all know, morale plays a big part in job performance. If the teachers don't feel positive about their experience as PSD employees, that is bound to affect their teaching. Treating the teachers with respect and honesty will ultimately impact the children of this district. We don't want to become a training ground for new teachers who will simply leave for larger salaries once they have a couple of years of experience under their belts. This does not make for a sustainable school system, nor does it inspire confidence in the community. In closing, I ask the board, why listen only to people who don't live in this town and aren't invested in the community the same way we are? Listen to what we have and give negotiation a chance. As Cynthia comes up, Laura Alvarado will be next, Julie Austin, and then Tracy Dalton, I think. Um, and that's all the cards that I have. Thank you, Cynthia. Okay, thank you. I'm Cynthia Skinner from Sunset Ridge School. Where are we? These are, this is a big question. I don't just mean in negotiations, but the world, education in California, schools in Pacifica. We need some perspective. We have legacies, teachers and administrators, Wendy, Ray, Tina, we all have similar legacies. You were teachers, you remember. Think about the time when, um, sorry, I'm sorry, I mixed up my cards. Um, think about the time when um, uh, teachers You've heard this before, when someone says to you, I just couldn't do it. How do you do it? I couldn't be a teacher. My God, how do you do the kids? How do you do it? And your head starts to bob, and then, but you really want to say, you're right. You couldn't do it. That's because it's a profession. We've got degrees. We've got credentials. We've got auxiliary credentials. We've got professional growth hours. We've got training. We've got experience. And, you know, the, uh, 
you, you understand that, and I'm so sorry I mixed up all these cards. I'm so out of order. But anyway, it's a profession, and I'm just going to skip to number 17. <laughs> no, no Silicon Valley business model could superimpose on us. You know, we've got kind of an art thing going on. I parallel it with the ICU nurse. It's a special kind of nurse. All nurses are special. But the ICU nurse takes the order from the doctor. That's all the credit, right? The doctor gets the credit. The ICU nurse takes the order from the doctor. And the nurse takes the order and mixes the brew to make it just right for the patient. It's about the nurse and his or her patient. And I think about that common popular message we hear, or we used to hear, just close the door. It's about you and the kids. And that's what it's about. It's not about the check boxes. It's about you and the kids. That's what it boils down to. That's what's important. Please respect our profession. Thank you. My name is Laura Alvarado. I have three children in the Pacifica School District. Can you I have louder, please? <laughs> I have been a PTO board member for a number of years and I'm currently representing IBL. I would like to first of all start on a positive note and say that the uh, Pacifica School District has a good reputation for excellent schools. And I have to say that a great portion of that is attributed to our hardworking and dedicated teachers. Um, in the eight years that I have been um, in the district, I have seen us pull together many times during rough times. Um, our teachers, for example, took larger classes as well as furlough days. The PTOs had to step up to make sure that programs that were at risk of being cut off were actually kept running. I was actually very impressed personally to see all of us pulling together and supporting one another and I thought my children could not be in a better school district. I'm here to just say that I support our teachers and I ask that you please listen to their voice and in hopes to retain the highly qualified teachers that we currently have. I feel like our children depend on it. Thank you. Coming up, Tracy next, and then my, the last part I have is Jonathan Harris. Okay. Thank you. So my name is Tracy Dalton, and I've been in no, Pacifica. That's, yeah. oh. that's okay. You're there. We'll just. Okay. Is that it's okay with is everybody? Uh, I'm Come on. Oh no, I'm sorry. That's okay. That's all right. Oh, I know. I'll there. be quick. No. Okay. <laughs> um, so I've been in this community my whole entire life, my whole 45 years. Um, all of my children have been here at Valley Bar for 11 years. And all I've seen over the 11 years is my amazing, not only teachers, they are my dear friends and community members, have to work harder with less time to prep, with less art, with less everything. And they're still here, standing, united. Look at all of these people in this room. They love their teachers more than anything. They want to remain a community together. We're supporting them. So please, when you make these decisions about these wonderful, amazing, friends, parents, but most importantly, they are our teachers. They're caring, you know, they're our children's future. Please think like a parent. Think like a community member, not an administrator, please. <laughs> about 10 minutes ago that I was going to be speaking, so I've been scribbling some stuff down. Uh, my name is Julie Austin, and I am a parent to two kids at Sunset Ridge. I am a stay-at-home mom, and I'm currently the vice president of the PTO. Um, with that, I've become being a parent at the school a job. I try and do as much as I can to help the school and help the parents. I'm there after school. I'm there in the evenings. And there are so many teachers that are still there. 
There are many times we're leaving, oh, we just had our booth fest at Sunset Ridge, and there are many times that we're leaving 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, teachers are walking in making copies, many cars are still in the parking lot, uh, weekends their cars are there, they're there all the time and they're not getting compensated. Um, let's see. Uh, their job absolutely never ends. I grew up with a mom who was a special education teacher and she spent so much time at the local supply stores buying borders and buying you know everything that you guys need for a classroom and that all came out of her own money and I know that that's what's happening with our teachers. There's just not budgets for them to buy their stuff but they're still making sure our kids have all of those supplies out of their own money. That's not fair. That, unfortunately, that's become reality and that's just what's expected. However, they should be receiving a paycheck that covers those things. They should be taken care of because they're, like the previous woman said, they're our kids' future. I'm, I've got a second grader and a third grader and I'm leaving, leaving my kids on a daily basis with these people and they're providing my kids love, respect, dedication, in addition to their education. And that, to me, is absolutely invaluable. And they should be they should be compensated for those things um, fairly. Whether it's you know they should be getting a million dollar paycheck. Hey, I mean, who I, I actually I wanted to become a kindergarten teacher after I graduated college, and I was like, I'm so done with college and school. I I love it, and I respect my teachers. I personally don't think I could do it on a daily basis. And what you guys do, it's unmeasurable. You know, and I'm so thankful for all of our Sunset Ridge teachers in addition to the school district. Um, eight years ago, eight and a half years ago, before we bought our house, my husband, we were living in Mill Valley, and my husband looked all over the Bay Area to see where we should move because he was living in, well, he was working at the Presidio at the time. So he could kind of go over so many bridges to get to work. He looked at Daly City, he looked at Sunset District, you know, all these places. And he's like, Sunset Ridge has great schools. Their test scores are great. We toured, you know, uh, four of the five elementary schools in Pacifica, settled on Sunset. Not a single regret. Love that school. Love the dedicated staff. And, you know, hopefully you guys can get what you guys truly deserve. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak? Okay. Thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jonathan Harris, and I'm co-chair of the Laguna Salada Education Association negotiations team. Um, I'm here to address this board's decision to declare impasse in negotiations with LSCA, rather than use the interest-based bargaining process in good faith. Good faith bargaining and the IBB process have served this district well for many, many years and have given the Pacifica School District a creative approach to address financial downturns, the constantly changing landscape of public education, and contentious issues between the district and LSCA. This process makes us a team that's able to approach problems in an innovative way that leaves both stakeholders feeling that their interests have been met. At the heart of this process is genuine respect and trust that supersedes the conflict. This year, the board hastily declared impasse rather than bargain in good faith. They showed no commitment to the IBB process that has served us well for so long. Instead, they've made a last and final offer that they can impose unilaterally, regardless of any mediation with LSEA. Our members have made, ourselves, made themselves quite clear in their opinions about the board's last and final offer. It is onerous and does not meet with our interests, as it diminishes the total compensation of our bargaining unit year after year. We have options that we feel could meet the interests of both our members and the district. However, in declaring impasse, the board has sent a strong message. They do not respect Pacifica teachers enough even to hear their options, and so they will bully them into submission with impasse. This is not a model that will bring us together to solve future conflicts or problems. This is not a model any of us would recommend to our students to solve conflict. LSEA has been an extremely reasonable late labor partner. LSEA has been an extremely reasonable labor partner. The solvency of this district is the priority of no one more urgently than its teachers, and we know how to stretch a budget. Members remember a few years ago when the district faced economic downturn and we volunteered to take pay cut days, give up stipends and prep periods. Remember when you asked us to take less pay than our daily rate um, and give up our personal time to get trained in writing workshop and math for the good of our students. Well, we did it and our actions speak for themselves. Now it's time for the board's actions to catch up with its rhetoric. 
Instead of saying you're offering full family benefits, actually offer it. Your last and final offer only offers a cap, not full benefits. Instead of saying you want to attract and retain teachers, listen to what your teachers have said they want. Don't offer a deal that diminishes our total compensation year after year, saying it will attract and retain teachers, especially as we, fa as we face a huge shortage of teachers in the coming years. Instead of saying you respect your teachers, show some respect and meet us at the table in good faith. End the impasse. All right. I do have a statement that has been prepared by the board. Do you want me to read the author as well? It's the last statement. Okay. Um, so, at this point, we look forward to ongoing conversations so that we can reach an agreement. There are two scheduled meetings, one on Monday, November 3rd, and, the, and a follow-up meeting on December 12th. So we are continuing conversations. Thank you all for coming. LSCA only knows about the one on Monday. It's nice and boring knows. Oh. Okay, so we know there's one on Monday and we can discuss other meetings as, as necessary. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Excuse me. I think you need to understand that we can't engage in discussion because it's a non it's not an agendized item and by the Brown Act we can't engage in a debate or discussion on it. Email us or look at our um, look at the website that has FAQs. There's a meeting with the mediator on Monday. We would like to talk a lot more than we can. Very frustrating for us as well. Let's let's take it to the And now we can go down and answer questions. Thank <laughs> you.
I was at the CPAC meeting. I helped build the Valmar um, garden and uh, I went to their work study. I attended the uh, Rotary Bowlathon on the uh, 19th. Um, I discovered that the district has a great bowling team. <laughs> okay, I discovered the district has a, a good bowling team. Oh. <laughs> All right, the district has a bowling team, okay? <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Um, the study session we were all at. Then I went to a uh, San Mateo County Transit Authority meeting uh, last night that was rather interesting, talking about the money they have to spend on different transit plans and the Measure A money, not the recent Measure A, but the other Measure A that went to transit. And it was, struck me, I was quite surprised. I didn't realize only 1% of those funds goes to um, pedestrian and bicycle. Uh, so there's some discussion about how kids get to school. And uh, anyhow, it's an interesting group. It, it probably wouldn't hurt to pay some attention to them. And uh, funding, you know, there's a lot of fun, uh, focus on highway stuff, but they also do a lot of other infrastructure things. So um, city folks were there. Uh, Don Horsley was there. But it, it's a good thing for us to, to pay attention to. Uh, one of the things that was raised was the need for them to reach out to more related agencies that um, several people commented that there's sort of a silo mentality and that's you know something we've been working with as a board um, with our efforts to work with the city and Jeff and the water district but there's other agencies that do stuff that affect us and um, to the extent that we can be connected and know what they're doing and have know they know who we are and what our issues are Good thing. I've also been to about 800 other meetings that have nothing to do with the district, so I won't bore you. Uh, well, since uh, since our last meeting, I of course went to our study session that we were all at. Uh, I also attended a uh, San Mateo County uh, LGBTQ Commission meeting. Uh, it was after we had the inaugural, and, and now this was the first meeting where we really started to kind of get down to business and start our strategic plan and all that stuff. So it's exciting that that's getting going. And then uh, I also had the opportunity to go up to Sunset Ridge and meet with uh, with Ellie and uh, Joe DiCarlo, a representative from the police department, as well as a representative from the city to discuss uh, pedestrian and traffic issues up there at Sunset Ridge. and, and uh, uh, the city came forward with some good ideas that hopefully are, are being established already, something for us to do, something that they'll do, and something for the police to kind of do, and hopefully that will solve a lot of problems that are going on up there. Um, since our last meeting, I've been to a, um, a, a CI meeting at the San Mateo County office, 
of education uh, focus on English learners. So we looked at the um, ELA, ELD standards and um, what they're going to mean for us and our, our future instruction. And um, the, attended a, a webinar at my desk of, um, <laughs> uh, by the CSBA um, uh, in which it was discussed um, your negotiations and looking at no negotiations from your um, uh, from your LCAP from you know with your LCAP in mind and it was very good and uh, maybe I could do a little report out on that at some point soon. Went to the work study um, and Well, Andrea and I, in our other jobs, oh, yeah. were at a Silicon Valley Math Initiative um, with SIVA, with SIVA <laughs> and some teachers, so, um, so that was good. Um, also, the uh, work study on site plans, and I just have to say that um, I so appreciate the process and the information that's shared by the principals and all of the good work. We're going to officially approve it at some point down the line. So, um, uh, maybe I'll save my comments for, the, for at that point in time. Mandy? So, um, the last couple of days, um, the, the first day on Monday, the principals and I attended a, um, a kind of a, a special conference or meeting with Lucy Calkins, who is the person who um, really is the author to um, Balanced Literacy, the, the reading approach that we use in our district. And so we found it, it's a, it was a wonderful opportunity. San Mateo County Office of Ed was able to host it for us. Um, it, there were a room full of superintendents and principals, um, administrators, curriculum leaders um, at this particular conference. And she, she spoke about the different uh, aspects of writing workshop and reading workshop and gave us some really great insights as to how we can continue the work and um, and do better with the with the materials the other day uh, the next day she spent with um, those of us who were able to attend a half day session at Sherman School in San Francisco Unified School District where they are considered a project school. So they have been working with balanced literacy for, for many years now. And we were able to walk into classrooms, see students at work, and then sit in dialogue about what we saw. We also had the opportunity to have uh, a question and answer session with um, Lucy and Lori Pessa, who is her one of her um, colleagues that she works with at Teachers College. Um, what was interesting is, is I really feel that there is a groundswell um, happening in our county and in the Bay Area in relationship to implementing balanced literacy. And so it's our hope that we're going to be able to start establishing some networks for our administrators, for our coaches, so that we could start and continue to learn from each other in relationship to um, this approach to reading. Um, it's a very exciting time. Everyone is seeing how it's really meeting the needs of all students, from those who are gifted and talented to students who uh, may have some learning needs and reading dif difficulties to students who are English learners because it really allows for a differentiation um, in regards to uh, learning how to read and then uh, reading to learn. And so it's, it was a, a two exciting days and um, I'm looking forward to working with the county and the other school districts in encouraging and promoting this approach to reading. Um, again, uh, according to Gary Waddell, who is the deputy superintendent from San Mateo County Office of Ed, um, he was getting calls from around the state f trying to find out how we were able to get uh, Lucy Calkins to come out. So we were very, very fortunate. We, we feel very lucky. This month I have had the opportunity to visit um, many of the schools, if not all of the schools. I think I have, I have um, gone to all of them and had the opportunity to see the great work that is happening in the schools. 
teachers are working very hard as our students and as our parents as they're in the hallways volunteering their many hours to ensure that we can get um, the best education possible for our students. I had the opportunity as well to attend uh, Bridges to Success last night at Sharp Park Golf Course. And um, we had an event led by Christine Thurstenson. And um, this is really bringing our early childhood education um, people together from the preschools of Pacific, City of Pacifica to private preschools to our kindergarten first grade teachers. I think Tom and Monica were um, able to attend. And um, it's led by uh, Tina Van Rapworth as our contact person with Christine. But we are able to do these activities due to a grant that we have received through the Silicon Valley Community Foundation. So they also support us with our uh, kickoff to kindergarten in the summer, our summer program. So we are really trying to coordinate all of these efforts. And it's exciting to see how um, the room was filled with wonderful agencies and just interaction of people from private to city to district. So again, that whole whole issue about us having to work together and not in silos to make sure that we're providing the best uh, education possible for our students. And so I think that's about it. Oh, and then we are sending our teachers, sorry, last one, um, to Next Generation Science Standards. Um, so we're fortunate to, there was a conference uh, in Oakland and SEVA, uh, Karen Neusty, uh and a few of our teachers who are in the intermediate grades or in the middle school grades who are content specific were able to attend uh, the session. So again, it's important that we continue to gear up as far as next generation science standards, which are the newly adopted standards in the state of California. So we're working on that as well. Okay, great. Uh, so we're on to district business. Um, the first item of business is the single plan for student achievement. Um, and this is an action item, and we have, um, it's called SIPSA, uh, for Cabrillo, IBL, Ocean Shore, Ortega, Sunset Ridge, and Valley Mar. Are, are here to be approved tonight. Wendy? So um, I just wanted to re remind the board that the purpose of the site plans are to help the schools um, set their own goals that are in line with the goals that are required by Title I, since we're a program improvement district, as well as in line with our LCAP as a district, and um, helps them to communicate with their families. Uh, it's approved by their site council before it comes here to the board, uh, and it outlines the way that they're spending um, the majority of their money that they're given as a site. And so the board did have a chance to review the site plans in depth with all of the principals. Thank you very much, principals, for being here tonight in case the board has any more questions. Uh, but we spent a whole session um, where the principals were able to present the key components of their plan, and the board was able to talk with them about that. Okay, so yes, we spent three hours together. <laughs> That's why there's no questions. Um, but um, I would just, you know, having been on the board for 12 years, when we site plans are required by Ed Code, and when I first came to this district, it was something that everybody did in order to check that box off of we meet that requirement. Um, and I don't ever think they were very productive. And in the in the last three or four years, I think that. Um, the process that has been set up has been much more informative to the board and much more um, helping to the sites um, drive their student achievement. So I just really have to thank the principals for all the hard work that they do, not only in writing the documents, um, but also in, more importantly, in implementing. And being, being there, it's basically a reflection. What did we do well? What did we... Um, what do we need to do better and how do we do it and what resources do we need and as a board I think we all want to hear what is it that's holding what is it that you need to be supported by so that you can achieve all the wonderful things that you've put in the plan so please let us know and within the budgetary constraints <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much do we have a motion to approve all the plans I move that we approve the SIPSAs 
Second. All in favor? Okay. Five Giants game is yours. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Two innings left. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> <laughs> One and a half, maybe. Um, the, the next item of business is the county school district. <coughs> sorry, county district schools <laughs> data and review. This is an action item. Um, it is recommended the board consider to approve the closure of Lindemar Education Center as a traditional K school and opening the school district as an independent um, study homeschool as an alternative school and Lenamar Education Center as a special education preschool. Okay, so the um, recommendation is phrased in a way that the CDE will know what to do with our request. But to put it in simple terms, right now LMEC is listed as a traditional K-8 school. And we do not have any traditional K-8 programs running there. We have an independent study program, which we call homeschool but follows the independent study ed code and we have a special needs preschool and so in order to um, properly reflect what's happening at that building uh, we need to file for new CDS codes so that we can have one for the independent study homeschool program and one for the uh, special education preschool, both housed in the same building. The community will still be able to, you know, call it LMEC, uh, but it will be more truth in reporting, and that way our schools will be uh, compared against similar schools. There, there will be uh, in compliance with the right uh, ed codes and things like that. Richard? So by doing this, is, does it put any restrictions on us? Should we ever have to add more at that site or go back at some point to we would just have to go through this process again that we would like to we can um so it doesn't restrict us for a certain time period or anything no like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay yeah it, it, so we're not changing anything other than our listing so that our scores and test are, are accurate as opposed to the skewed way they show up right now right and um, you know the way that we're looked at for attendance the way that we're looked at for any measure um, the school is not it's not being properly reflected right now great thank you mm -hmm. all in favor Oh, sorry, we motion. didn't look. <laughs> I move that we, uh, <laughs> I move that we reclassify Lindemar Educational Center. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Pass it. Well, Joan wants to move the meeting along. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you want me to move? I'll move. Okay, here we go. We have a resolution um, for the Chief of Police, um, James Taza, who is retiring. So I have the honor of bringing this uh, agenda item forward. Uh, and it is for Chief Tassa, who has been a wonderful support to Pacifica School District over the years. Um, so I do have the resolution, and um, shall I read it? Sure. Okay. So Chief James V. Tassa, resolved by the Board of Trustees of the Pacifica School District, County of San Mateo, State of California, that... Whereas James Tassa joined the city of Pacifica as a police officer starting his career in law enforcement on November 6, 1982. And whereas James Tassa rose through the ranks of police officer, police sergeant, and police captain to be promoted to the rank of police chief for the city of Pacifica on July 8, 2011. And whereas Chief James Tassa served the citizens of Pacifica and led the Pacifica Police Department with integrity and extreme professionalism, serving as an inspiration and example for all to follow. And whereas Chief Tassa reached out to the Pacifica School District in a caring, compassionate manner, always working to maintain a safe learning environment for the students and staff. And whereas James V. Tassa, effective February 20th, 2014, retired as police chief from the city of Pacifica and continued to serve as interim chief of police through October 30th, 2014. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Pacifica School District hereby extends on behalf of students, parents, and staff its sincere thanks and appreciation for a job well done. And 
Further, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees extends its best wishes to James Tassa upon the occasion of retiring from the City of Pacifica following 32 years of service and extends its sincere best wishes for a rewarding and fulfilling future. Move approval. Second. All in favor? Passes by vote. Thank you. And with the a board's permission, I'll present that to him at the retirement luncheon yes. in November. Thank you very with much. With our best wishes. Thank you. Um, okay, so we're on to first quarter report on the Williams Uniform Complaints Act. And is this an action item? Is this an action item? Information. Information, Information. Board, okay. Uh, for, the first, for the quarter, July okay. 1st through September 30th, there were no complaints filed um, at any school. Yeah, our usual report. Okay, now on for the fun stuff. Board bylaws and policies. Here we go. Uh, the first set is um, board policy in AR 4112.2 certification. Board policy 4112.21, and AR that goes with it, interns. Well written, guys. Board policy 4115 and AR, um, that's evaluation supervision. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Go for it, Eric. Um, I mean, I understand it, but I, it just gives me some heartburn. Uh, the section where it says um, at least performance of each certificated appointment with permanent status should be evaluated, assessed on a continuing basis at least every other year, at least every five years, if all the following conditions are made. Etc. or on the administrative regulation? Sorry, I cut and pasted. I, I just, okay. it, I, I don't know that we can do anything to change that, but it just seems a long time between evaluation. And, and I, I guess I came from a world where people got evaluated on a yearly basis, and um, I recognize the realities of <laughs> You notice I didn't say this when the principals were still in the room, <laughs> but um, I just think our goal should be that our staff gets evaluated more frequently, and I certainly am not comfortable with every five years. That just seems a little over the top. I don't, so I don't know what the wish of the, it's just a concern. So with that, um, that is part of their contract, contract as well. So, um, and there are certain stipulations on who can be done every five years, and it does have to be approved by the principals. So we're follow so we're kind of in caught in the middle with contract and it having it needing to reflect board policy. So we can bring that back to negotiations as part of <laughs> looking at the evaluation <laughs> process, if you so ch would like. But at this particular time, this is our current practice. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Timing in most things in life is important. You, yeah, thank you. So in light of that information, is this... I'll just share my concern. <laughs> okay. and the next time it comes you up, you can all do with what you want. Okay, thank you. Right. But it, it is not used, you know, without real thought. So I, I, there are stipulations to it. Okay, um, so we're on to board policy 4117.3 personnel I have a reduction. Oh. Jim? I'm oh. sorry. I think you you bypassed 4112.21 interns. Oh, I think I did that one, didn't I? I heard, I heard, interns. I heard interns. But oh, did you? But okay. okay. All right. Thank you, though, Sandy, thank for, you. for keeping me on my toes because I certainly sorry. need somebody to I do that. Yeah, I don't That's know right. if I heard it two or three times, but I know I heard it at least once. Okay. All right, so, so we've got the certification, interns, the evaluation supervision, and now we're at BP 4117.3 personnel reduction. Okay. Um, the board policy and AR for 4131.1, teacher support and guidance. I just, uh, like, I understand why we're, we're deleting the a we're deleting the AR, right? That's the, because we don't actually have, that's the one about the peer review program that we don't actually have. really have right okay I which is fine um, I just wanted to sort of state for the record that it seems like it would be really something that we should keep on on the back burner um, 
and hopefully be able to bring back sometime because it's been shown to be tremendously effective as long as it's permitted by, you know, by the, that's permitted by the state, right? It's not, because I know in, in San Jose, the, uh, the union and the district came to uh, agreement about a PAR program and then the state axed it. Um, well, the, so the state is no longer fund there because of the categorical programs. They are no longer funding categorical programs. PAR was one of them, mm -hmm. and so the notion is now everything is folded into LCFF. So um, we won't get full funding. And was PAR part of that full funding until 2020? Do you, you know, so yeah, yeah, no. But my understand my understanding in the San Jose case was that it wasn't that. Uh, it wasn't an issue of because uh, of course we could dis we could decide to fund it if we right. had the money, but the the question is whether it would be considered an acceptable way a method of evaluation. That in some states um, the state has forbidden peer evaluation, and so I didn't I don't know what California's I, position on that is. I don't know if there has any been been any law changed about that as long as it was an agreement between the the uh, bargaining our oh, bargaining so partner, partners. And so I'm not sure about the San Jose situation, but um, we do, you know, if there is a teacher in need, we will provide as much support as we can. But unfortunately, um, the way that the state is, um, has, has not funded PAR for, for many, many years, um, it's gotten to a point where it really just it became a lot of rhetoric, especially in our districts that are much smaller. Um, in districts that are larger that can kind of absorb that uh, the funding issues are able to maintain it. I don't know what they'll be doing in the future, however, okay. with this type of, of change and recommendation. So it'll be interesting to monitor. But if there are teachers who are out there that need our support, of course, we will go forward. And we're very fortunate to have our curriculum specialist to come and help. Um, and we also can have the support of San Mateo County Office of Ed, who, who are always very willing to, to lend a helping hand. Okay. So this is Board Policy 4315. It has the same title, Evaluation Supervision. Probably a different group. Okay, Board Policy 4315.1, Staff Evaluating Teachers. This is deletion. Um, executive, uh, that's what he is, right? Exhibit. Exhibit. 4319.21 professional standards. Board policy 5147 dropout prevention. Okay. Board policy 5149 at risk students delete per CSBA, CSBA recommendation. Well, you guys are good. <laughs> Okay, and then the last set um, is uh, AR 4212.42, drug and alcohol testing for school bus drivers. Yeah, I just had a, I, I know it said, can someone remind me why that change was, was made? It's, I, I don't really, I don't have an objection to it, but I was just curious why uh, they changed it to a traffic infraction as opposed to like a specific alcohol or drug. Well, actually, I have a problem with the way it's written. Okay. Um, where it says post-accident, this is 4212.42 mm -hmm. on um, post-accident test, the section for post-accident testing. Okay. So what page? Are you talking about I'm trying three? to, yeah, I got I just cut it so, out, and cut and pasted it, and I have to bring it back out, sorry. Which attached? This new system that we're using is hard. Is a little awkward still. Okay. So now you're so speaking to 4112.42 and then 4212.42. Right. Okay. And then Eric, you were speaking to 4212. Right. Okay. Wait, what's four, four, two, I found it. I think I found it on page three. Of which which of, one? Of one, one four two one two point four two. Four two one two. Mike doesn't show up with pages one, two, three. Yeah, it's in number okay. two where it says the driver the driver receives a citation for a moving violation and the accident involve bodily injury. The way I read that is unless the driver 
gets the citation along with the accident, you can't do testing. Now I, that may be for the lawyers, but the real just the reality check from my other lifetime is mm -hmm. it's not likely in an accident situation that the driver is going to get a citation at that time because the officer didn't unless the officer witnessed the crash he can't issue the ticket it would be part of the investigation so at the end of an injury accident investigation they would ask for whatever charges to be brought but as I read this if they haven't given a ticket at the time we couldn't test and I don't think that's the intention of what we want to do we want to be able to test so maybe I'm well the second paragraph does say that we can test up to eight hours after okay but the first one says you can't you can only it says and it's not it that's the way I read maybe I'm misreading it but Okay, let's go back to, to me the way I read it, and we don't have to you know, re resolve it now, but in section two, it says driver receives a citation for moving violation and the accident, so both things have to be there. So At least that's the way I'm reading it. Okay, so we go about post accident testing. The previous paragraph is as soon as practically practical, well, practicable, practicable, I didn't know that was a word. Yeah. <laughs> Following an accident involving a school bus or student activity bus, the superintendent or designee, okay, so the accident is happening on a district vehicle, shall ensure that the driver involved is tested for alcohol or drugs under either of the following conditions. The accident involved a loss of human life. The driver receives a citation for a moving traffic violation and the accident involved bodily injury to a person who required immediate medical treatment away from the scene of the accident and or disabling damage to one or more vehicles requiring towing and then so those are the two conditions and then it says the superintendent or designee shall attempt to administer it required so I guess the drug test in eight hours so I guess the question is is if they're involved in a minor fender bender you know nobody's really hurt it's just you know one of those things that happens um, and it might even be their fault. Can we do testing if we choose to? Is that the question uh, at hand? Well, no. that's a secondary question. Okay. The first question is the way this is written. I think it, the way it reads to me is you're, you're, you would not be able to test if both of those weren't true. Okay. So you want to say and or then? Well, yeah, or uh, not no, no and, but or. Just or. So you want to maybe say in number two, you want to say the driver receives a citation or, or the accident involved bodily injury. Okay. Because I, I want to be able to test should we. Yeah. Okay. Then to answer the secondary question, yes, we can test. Anytime. At, at any time. We could just if say we tomorrow. Have suspicion, yeah. If we have any kind of suspicion, we can, we can test. Yes. Okay. So for number two, we're taking out the and and the slash. Right, the last line where it says accident and or disabling damage. No, the first, the oh, first line. The first changing line? and to or. or just changing Correct. and to or. Okay. So you're either going to it's moving violation or somebody gets hurt. We're going to. Okay. Do that. Or was he speeding or talking on his cell phone? Or something? Not that our wonderful drivers do that. Okay. And the, the thing that I'm not saying, and maybe I missed it, going through is what happens if a person refuses to take a test. Is that in one of our other policies? It seems to me we've talked mm -hmm. about this before. Yeah. There's yeah. a policy in a, because this happens to be school bus drivers, but we can also test other employees. Right. So that's a different policy, correct? Right. And right. so they, they, in here they well? can refuse to test, but then we can also enforce testing through law enforcement. I, my recommendation is to not put, is to, to simplify policies as much as you can because if you have the same policy in five places mm -hmm. and you change it in place A, then you got to make sure you change it in place B, C, D, E, F. Having, having documented, done this for a living. Okay, well then it should at least refer to that other policy. Okay, so let's see if it does at the end because there's a whole section. This is, is this a board policy? Uh, this is, oh, this is an administrative reg. So we would need to look at the board policy to see if that reflects the other policies. Can we check that? Yeah. Outside the meeting? Is that right? Okay. Well, because I think what Richard's getting at is different than what Ray's saying. 
is there is a penalty involved, you know, whether or not law enforcement can require a test or not. But in not taking the test, then that is a different violation. That's a district, you know, call it insubordination, for example. You know, they're not following the rule, whatever, but that's actionable separate from whether or not they te the police test them or not. Correct. Right. So you have to, the police have to agree to do it. You know, they've got something going on. Well, it may not be a set of circumstances where they can require them to. But, but we can. So in other words, if we have an employee that we want tested, we call somebody, we send them someplace, mm -hmm. right? Right. To, to do that and if they don't right. comply. And if they refuse, we have no grounds, no jurisdiction to call the police and say, you have to force them to do this. No, we can't. We can't. And we can also um, enforce within our system disciplinary action. Uh, that should be referenced. Okay, can we go back and make sure it's referenced in the board policy? Because that would be the other piece that we would look at. The board policy in the air would go together. Because okay. I know, like, I have all of these things at work. I'm subject to random, I'm subject mm -hmm. to reasonable. And if I get into an accident, I'm automatically tested. Right. And if I were to refuse testing, then I'm automatically considered dirty and subject to disciplinary action. Right. Do you want us to bring back the other policy for review? Or? Well, I feel like we I think as, I think as long yeah. as it re as, as long as it refers to it, I, I think that's sufficient. Okay. So I think like there should be a reference to it, so there's okay. no questions. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, because that helps you navigate the process. Okay. Um, the last one is AR 4312.42, Administrative and Supervisory Drug and Alcohol Testing for School Bus Drivers. Can, can I, I just, for process, these, these uh, uh, Sandy or Nelson, from uh, my computer, these attachments open differently than the first set of attachments? That's what I found out. Mm -hmm. The window behind it from that window. Yes, okay. Good. Each time you had to go through a whole other step, several steps okay. to get them to open. Okay. Mine were fine. Okay. No, so. mine, mine was the same as Eric. Okay. Is this, is this a Mac BPPC kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, Mac, it always, no, mine? That always downloads. It's it's a downloads. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Thank okay. you. Okay. So. We're bringing all of that back on consent at uh, the next meeting in November. So, so was there a question? There was no question on C attachments? No. Um, so, looking for future agenda items. Did anybody Ooh. have anything they wanted to add? No. <laughs> to our. That's tempting. Because <laughs> <laughs> you won't be here. You only have one more shot. I have like 10 things I'd like you to stick on the agenda. Can we bring back all these board policies? Anything December else? 10th, uh, <laughs> November. <laughs> For November, of which um, life will be on, the, life is on the November one, right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, just so you know, anybody's really asking you that question. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll have life come back. Right. Any, anything else? Wendy, anything else? Okay. I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to find okay. it. Okay, we're going to adjourn the Live. meeting at 8.12. Good job, guys. Wow. We didn't do those concerts. Usually you just inform us. Right. Yeah. Those are just kind of there. Okay, so we are uh, going back into closed session. Okay, and it's the bottom of the ninth. The Giants are leading three to two. And Bumgarner's been pitching since the fifth. Wow. Thank you. I've been sitting here in my <laughs> suspense for like the whole time. I, I couldn't tell. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> All you need is just need to <laughs> You know, like I said, it's, it's my rule that I Matt, you have a computer. I don't, I'm like, I will like, I will not do that during a meeting. I feel like that's disrespectful to me. Oh! Oh! Oh!
Oh, oh. And yeah. 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 I could open it. And, 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 and so they took up. Well, that's why she did the one of the things that we're doing. So I don't know our presentation. We're just going to yeah, we already have a board policy. Our board you know, my, my whole approach is to <laughs> Not my circus, not my <laughs> monkey. <laughs> I love that thing. <laughs>